Hello Gaius, welcome to Pantheismus TV. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Could you introduce yourself? Uh, yes, I am Gaius Serralius. Uh, and for viewers, um, again, uh, the last name is uh, pronounced Serralius. Uh, uh, every now and then people think Serralius, but uh, it's Serralius. Um, I'm a YouTuber, uh, a writer, and uh, uh, an artist. Uh, in fact, by trade, I usually do illustration and graphic design work. Uh, and when that's not enough, I remodel houses, uh, which is actually kind of an art form in itself. You know, it's a lot of painting and almost sculpting. So I take something that starts out ugly and then hopefully ends up uh, beautiful. Um, I enjoy uh, bike riding, uh, going on walks, uh, love nature, um, love uh, philosophical thought, you know, very uh, introspective thinking. Um, and uh, I love watching movies. Uh, in 2017, I became a vegan, which has actually improved my health a great deal. Um, and I think that's, uh, and I, you know, I try to upload videos on, on the YouTube. It's been a while since I've done it. Uh, I hope to get back to it because it's kind of been a while since I've done it. Uh, but that's, you know, pretty much me in a nutshell. Thank you. Uh, what is God to you? Uh, that's actually a good one to start out with uh, because different uh, religions, different philosophical groups uh, define God differently. Uh, but there's one common denominator that I think we can all agree on. Uh, and that is, you know, I've, I've narrowed it down to the fact that God to me is uh, that which is the constant causation of my existence. So I think of him, or, or, or I, I shouldn't say him, you know, a lot of times we make the mistake of saying him because we were so used to thinking in those terms. Uh, but it's really an it, you know, God is kind of like this divine thing to me. Um, but uh, I don't believe in creation. So I always think of God as the cause, the ultimate cause of both my existence and the universe. And so it's this constant causation. That's that's what God is to me. And of course, you know, if you want to go into uh, further, uh, what is that? Uh, to me, it's the whole package, all of it, you know, all of nature, all of the cosmos. Uh, it, it requires the whole system, the whole package in order for any of it to exist in order for any of it to be possible. Um, so that's why, you know, when I when I first learned about the term pantheism and they think of all of nature or all of the cosmos as that godlike uh, agent that's res that's responsible for it all. That's that's when I knew, OK, I'm going to start referring to myself as a pantheist. Uh, you know, that term doesn't bother me because that's actually how I first got into pantheism. Uh, was when I was uh, looking at YouTube videos. Um, I forget I forget his uh, handle, but a YouTuber referred to my philosophy, and he he referred to it as pantheism or pantheistic thought. And so I I you know quickly looked it up, you know searched that term, and when I found out what the term meant, I thought, okay, yeah, that's that's exactly you know that's a good word to describe me. Um, and then ever since. Of course, I've, I've joined certain Facebook groups uh, uh, like Paul Harrison's, uh, which I would think that y'all would both be familiar with. Um, and then um, others that are, you know, pretty prominent groups. Um, I had briefly sort of cr even created my own Facebook uh, group. Um, I'll, you know, it's, it's something that, again, I haven't really had a whole lot of time to work with. I hope to get back to that. Um, but it, you know, it had a, it had a small following, um, and then I, I finally got to where I had to shift to other responsibilities. But if I could ever get back to that, I, I would like to do that. Um, but yeah, that, that's how I got into it, Ma mainly through YouTube and and learning about that term. You know, because uh, as I was saying before, uh, before we went went on, uh, we all kind of start out naturally we're, we're born natural born pantheist i think all of us uh, even people who later become indoctrinated into the abrahamic religion and other faiths uh, we instinctively seem to the, even i think even animals uh, are pantheists because we all just instinctively realize that nature 
is responsible for it all um, and the cause of it all. Um, so then, you know, even when, uh, when I look back on things that I thought about when I was a kid, um, I, re I realized, wow, that was, that was kind of a pantheistic point of view that I had, you know? So it was only later, you know, when I started, you know, cause my family started to go to the church a little bit. They weren't real big on it, but it was just something that they experimented with a little bit, um, mainly because of their own family background, you know? So it was something we did for, I don't know, a few months, uh, off and on. And then we finally all just kind of quit going. And that actually gave me a lot of room to explore pantheism or, or just other views. Uh, I feel sorry for a lot of people who are born into very religious families where, you know, really tight parameters where they don't really have any room to explore anything or they're afraid of what their parents might think. And I never had that. I never had those limitations at all. Uh, my parents were completely open to other ideas and were not upset. Uh, I remember my father uh, one time, you know, he would question it, but then even he later started reading, for example, Eckhart Tolle uh, and, and other spiritual books and kind of explored, you know, pantheistic type thinking and, and Eastern philosophy. You know, that was another thing when I was growing up, I got really into the Eastern philosophy. In fact, I used to watch, you know, I don't know if y'all are familiar with the series that came out in the seventies called Kung Fu uh, with David Carradine. And there was a lot of Eastern philosophy that was uh, shared throughout the series. And I just really related to it and really enjoyed it. I, in fact, I actually watched it mainly because of the philosophy, not because of the action, although that was good too, you know, so. Uh, what's it like living as a pantheist? Has pantheism changed you? Well, I think I kind of sort of answered that, the first part of that, but has it changed me? Uh, yes and no. Uh, uh, kind of, as I was saying, I've always kind of felt like I was a pantheist. I just finally kind of learned the term. Uh, but then as I did get older and started uh, thinking of it uh, on more intellectual terms uh, and just started wrestling with my own thoughts, my own questions, um, and just thinking about thinking about certain questions within the arena of pantheism, it did help to, in my opinion, relax me a great deal. Uh, and it gave me a great deal of comfort. Um, there were certain, now this is also, we, each of us, we pantheists have certain tailored views within pantheism. Because remember, pantheism is just like this really broad umbrella term with, you know, the broad understanding of what pantheism is. And then each of us kind of come into it and tweak it or, or, you know, we have our own specific worldview of pantheism. Uh, for example, some people believe in reincarnation, you know, some pantheists and some don't. Um, uh, some believe that uh, the universe was created, that God created the universe, uh, but I don't. Uh, I believe it's always existed and always will. Um, But uh, I'll give you a quick example of, of how it has comforted me. Uh, because of my own uh, exp exploration of pantheism, I've come to feel that the universe knows what it's doing. You know, it knows how it unfolds, that it's all taken care of. Um, I believe that uh, the universe has to be the way that it is. Um, and that uh, ultimately it's not, no, there's not going to be anything that's going to completely corrupt it or destroy the universe. Uh, whereas, you know, I, I'm sure some theists uh, actually worry and fear about that, have a great deal of fear about that. Uh, but, but because I personally believe that the universe has always existed in sort of like this cyclical thing, this divine machine like thing. Uh, I, I think it's it's beyond corruption. Uh, I believe it's this thing that remains uh, balanced and conserved overall. Um, of course, it's not always balanced from our point of view, you know, within our area, things can become very unbalanced, actually. Uh, but I'm just speaking from a bird's eye view. If you look at the over totality of it all, 
I believe it's all perfectly conserved. It's like this beautiful tapestry that can never be destroyed. And so there's a great deal of comfort in that for me. Um, now, again, when it comes to my personal take on pantheism, I believe that evil and pain, or we call it evil, but I'll, I'll refer to it as negative things that can happen to you or, you know, that the universe can do, you know, can cause you pain and suffering, in other words. Um, that's just an unfortunate component of the universe. It's kind of a yin-yang thing that can't be, that can never change, in my opinion. So even though I believe the universe will always exist, um, that doesn't mean it doesn't have its downsides or it doesn't have its negative side, its dark side, its cruel side, um, which it does. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of, you if you look at it like the uh, seasons, uh, you know, we just have to have storms that we have to endure um, in the cycle of things. And hopefully we just make it to the to the next part, you know, where, where the sun comes up, you know. So it has its good sides and bad sides. But it has it has comforted me uh, a lot, I think, and given me a lot of um, uh, removed a lot of questions, removed a lot of stress for me. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in life after death? Uh, yes, uh, I'm a strong believer in reincarnation. Uh, I believe that uh, sooner or later we will eventually lose our identity. Like I, I, you know, I know myself through the human conduit as Gaius, and I have certain memories and and certain a certain identity that will all soon fade. Uh, maybe even right away. I hope not. But, you know, because I'm not claiming to know exactly what happens afterwards. I have some ideas and those ideas are based on things that I've observed through nature. Um, if you look at nature, which seems to be very cyclical, you know, the rock cycle, the weather cycle, uh, worms shedding, uh, snakes shedding their skin, uh, the way a crab moves from one shell to another. It just seems to always symbolize or be metaphors for like this cyclical thing. Um, and of course, the other reason is, uh, I, you may be aware that ultimately I believe that you are the all. You ultimately, you are the summation of it all. So I am the universe. I, I am the cosmos perceiving itself. So in that sense, since I don't believe the universe can ever be destroyed, I, my, per, my perception, my human perception will be altered. You know, my, my human form will, will, of course, decay and rot away. But I believe me as that perceiving passenger moves through the universe from one shell to the next or, you know, one vessel to the next. Um, now, how exactly that transition happens, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, but again, I have some ideas. Um, I won't go into that now, but because that would be too long to go into, but um, that would be some rabbit holes to go down. But uh, yes, uh, I definitely believe in reincarnation. Um, you know, if you look at a lot of theistic beliefs where they believe in this going to this paradise, I just can't see that because I, I always believe that we have to have pain in our lives in order to appreciate the pleasure. Um, it, it's, it, it helps to provide the contrast. So I just don't believe that there's any such thing as living happily ever after, like going to this blissful state where everything is perfectly good forever and ever. So life has these uh, rhythms of up and down, you know, that undulates between the positive and the negative. Um, you know, it has its crescendo and then it has its falls. Uh, so I just don't think any if any eternal bliss exists. Uh, but I do believe some form of reincarnation, uh, whether we lose our memory of our identity right away or not, I don't know. But I do believe eventually uh, we will become something where I unfortunately get to forget, you know, this lifetime, you know, which I, I would love to remember, but, uh, you know, it, 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 it's good for some people because some people have a horrible life and they don't want to remember, you know, their life. But, uh, but yeah, hopefully uh, if, if uh, when I cross over or through that transition, 
uh, it would be nice if I could go for a good while remembering who I am and, and, and retaining my memories and my thoughts. I would love that. Hmm. Would you describe yourself as spiritual? Um, I guess that depends on how you would define the word spiritual. Um, I'm a very introspective person. I'm in touch with my emotions uh, in my mind, and I'm not so much a, a materialistic person, uh, a person who has to always have things uh, or be an extrovert. I'm not an extrovert. I'm an introvert. Um, but there's people who really require the material world, uh, like they need, you know, a fancy car. They need to do all this actual physical stuff and have physical things. So in the sense of being introspective, being uh, tapped into my emotions, uh, I would, I would, I, I view myself as a very spiritual person. Um, I enjoy spiritual things like, you know, listening to music and uh, going on walks in within a, you know, forest or, or what have you. So I would think that's a yes. Unless you define spiritual, you know, much differently than I do. Do you also reach Spinoza? Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, I've read some. Uh, the funny thing is, is when I made my YouTube videos, uh, people kept asking me, have you read Spinoza? You know, this sounds like Spinoza. And so I finally was like, who is this Spinoza? So I finally started looking him up. And there was another one, um, I can't remember right offhand, there was somebody else they kept saying, you, you, you remind me of so-and-so. Um, but yeah, I, so I looked up Spinoza and uh, from what I've read, I actually really appreciate, in fact, uh, he's one of my uh, favorite uh, philosophers. Uh, oh, and I just remembered, it's Alan Watts. That's the other one people often ask me, you know, have I read Alan Watts? Um, and he's definitely one of my favorite uh, uh, philosophers and thinkers. Uh, in interestingly, uh, he died the year I was born. Um, so I think I was on this planet for a few months while he was walking the planet. Uh, and then he passed a uh, few months after I was born. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, he's a, he and uh, Spinoza. Uh, I don't think I've ever read anything so far uh, that they've said Actually, I remember there was a few things that Alan Watts said that I had an issue with. But for the most part, um, I really appreciate the way they think. Carl Sagan is another one. Love Carl Sagan. Wow. Mm. Uh, what do you think of Neil Donald Walsh's books? Uh, I don't know a whole lot about him, but, but from what little I do know, uh, my philosophical views actually stray, I think, quite a bit from his. Um, in fact, uh, it might even be safe to say that a lot of my views might, might be the exact opposite. Um, for example, his 10 illusions, um, uh, I, I can't remember them all, but uh, for example, uh, failure, uh, that failure doesn't truly exist or that it's just an illusion. Um, now, he may be using a certain language because, like I said, I haven't read it in full detail. But uh, to me, uh, failure absolutely exists, um, or at least the concept that someone can set out to achieve something and they don't accomplish that. They don't you know, succeed in accomplishing that particular thing that they set out to accomplish. Um, and then another one was judgment, that judgment was an illusion. And I'm a big believer that judgment does exist, that we living beings, not just humans, but all beings, we are constantly judging. We are required to judge. Like when we walk into a room, we're like, is this room on fire? Is this person mad at me? You know, we're constantly having to assess our environment and our situation this, just for safety reasons even. So like whenever we go anywhere, we, we actually do it for safety, um, especially nowadays. Uh, but uh, yeah, now not everybody always does a good job of it, you know, in you know, but we all have judgments and the way other people judge you actually matters. It, it can actually affect whether or not you get a job or not, or what, how other people respond to you and interact with you. So it's a very crucial thing uh, for us to even be aware that, yes, judgment does exist. I, I'd actually be interested in uh, reading up more on his uh, views just to see why exactly he believes that. Um, 
let's see, another one was need. Uh, the fact that we don't have needs, I don't understand why he would think that that's an illusion that life forms have needs. You know, we need water to survive. We need food. We need sustenance. We need, we need shelter. We need all kinds of things. Um, we need to be, we need to have, uh, we need to feel recognized by others. You know, we need to feel important to some degree in the eyes of others. You know, we need to feel valued. Uh, so we have a, a great many uh, needs in my opinion. Um, I think another one was ignorance. He said that ignorance is an illusion. Uh, again, um, I don't know what he's, what he's thinking there because there are so many people, I think it's actually ignorance and greed. I think are the two main causes of all the the darkness in the world, the pain, the problems, the corruption. Uh, it has to do with ignorance, a lack of knowledge. So why he would think that uh, people having a lack of knowledge or insight is an illusion. I think he uh, might have also thought that we at least have access to all knowledge. But again, as human conduits, which we are forced to be, uh, we don't have access to all knowledge. Like if you gave me a mathematical, you know, problem right now, especially a huge one, because I'm horrible at math, uh, I might not have access to that knowledge or know how to, you know, I don't know how to build a computer. I just, you know, so there's so many things I don't know. I would like to know, but I just don't know. And so I'm limited in that sense. Um, so the, the, there are certain illusions that he mentioned that to me are just part of that tapestry of the universe I mentioned, that we have to have those things. It's, it's just part of uh, the human or any perceiving being, any perceiving entity has to have limitations, okay? It's just, uh, if, if, if you had all knowledge of all things all at once, uh, it would all be like one homogenous, lukewarm soup where nothing interesting happens because, you know, you're, you're in tune with all moments all at once. Um, so you'd almost be like a rock, you know, in terms of how we perceive. So in order to just be a perceiving being, uh, we have to have limitations. Um, again, it comes back to that yin-yang uh, principle. Uh, you know, if you think about uh, the yin being what we know and the yang being what we don't know, uh, there, it's, it's, a, it's, it's always going to be like a combination of the two. It's, it's unique with each individual. It's a unique swirl of the yin-yang. That's what each of us represents, actually. A very interesting combination and swirl of the yin and the yang. So, but I'm sure that, uh, you know, if I read more about what he uh, uh, espouses, that I might find some nuggets in there that I agree with. But for the most part, I think it's safe to say that my philosoph my philosophical views stray quite a bit from his. How did you get? How did you get into making videos about pantheism? Oh, I think I kind of answered that one. Um, uh, that was when I, you know, I had first heard about that YouTuber uh, making a reference to me uh, and, and and expressing to his viewers that uh, that was all very pantheistic and that I must be a pantheist. Um, so I think I made my first YouTube video in 2010. Um, and that was uh, the forever all. I think it was called the forever all. And it was such a success. I didn't even plan on that. Uh, I, you know, I made that first video and it had some really good music too. Um, and I, it's not me talking, but it's, you know, I put up writing of what I believe and a lot of people responded to that and it really resonated with them and it just skyrocketed in terms of views. Uh, so then I started putting out more videos kind of expressing my philosophical views. Um, and it was really nice because my extended family are very religious. So it would not be safe for me to just start talking about pantheism at the dinner table, like at Thanksgiving, for example. Uh, so YouTube allowed me a sort of a vessel to, um, you know, it kind of gave me a megaphone to just speak to a lot of people uh, about my philosophical views and get feedback, you know, 
people would write back, uh, usually positive. Every now and then I would get the negative uh, comment or, you know, some theist would, would shout out and say, I'm really confused and they hope I find the light. You know, they, they hope I follow Christ because, you know, usually they would make it quite clear that they are a Christian um, or, you know, um, but, uh, you know, I, I found that, if, you know, you just, either don't respond to them or be really polite. They usually go away. Uh, but yeah, usually the response was usually pretty positive. Um, and so I started coming out with those videos and I had to put it aside for a while uh, due to an illness uh, and also just other life responsibilities. It was, it, it was very time consuming to make videos, especially quality videos. Uh, and I really wanted to make good videos. I didn't wanna just throw anything together and throw it up there. Um, but I've been recently wanting to get back to it. Uh, I've been trying to set time aside. In fact, I'm, I'm working on a, uh, another YouTube channel now to sort of showcase my artwork. Um, and, uh, I think I, I think I titled it, uh, Gaius Art. Um, and I'm working on a video actually right now, uh, I'm, some speed videos where they show, you know, sped up videos of me doing artwork, uh, that I'll be posting um here pretty soon um i'll have to send you a little notice about that uh, uh but yeah uh youtube uh, i'm really thankful for youtube um, and facebook actually because it, it has allowed pantheists to come together um in fact one of the common uh you know a theme a running theme when it comes to comments is people saying thank god for this video or this channel because I thought I was the only one or I didn't know there were others out there that thought the same way um, or I was a pantheist but I never knew what it was called or, or you know mm -hmm. and so it allowed people to find these groups kind of like the group you've formed you know uh, created and so more and more of us are uh, you know collecting uh, thankfully and I think the more pantheist the better actually yeah do you have a pantheistic community? I don't. Uh, just other than the uh, the YouTube community and the one that I briefly started uh, that started up a following and then I kind of got out of... Uh, the other reason why I actually stopped with that Facebook group is because that particular Facebook channel uh, that I was on, that or Facebook account, I had just sort of, sort of walked away from it because... Um, I was getting a lot of, uh, it, was a, it was a huge demand uh, on me. Uh, a lot of people were trying to connect with me and not, I would have to say some of them were pretty, I don't know, strange individuals uh, to put it nicely. Uh, you know, some, you know, cause unfortunately when, when it comes to these groups, you have some that are just so far out there on the, on the woo woo uh, factor, you know, really kind of weird stuff that I'm not in. I'm, I'm a little more shifted towards what Paul Harrison d has done, which is, you know, he calls his scientific pantheism. So it's more of a responsible approach. Uh, I'm not as dedicated to the scientific evidence as Paul Harrison is, because I believe that that's, again, a little too limiting. Uh, that's a little too far in one direction, and then others go too far in the other opposite direction. So hopefully I'm somewhere in the middle, sort of a balance. But I do always want to use some form of evidence. I have to have all my views, all my pantheistic views are based on something I've observed or something that I've learned in school, uh, whether it's from teachers, whether it's from uh, my parents, uh, friends, books, movies. So uh, it's, a, it's a, a compilation or, or a culmination of all that over all the years of my life uh, up to now. And so it all came together because, you know, of course, I didn't know a lot of what I what I like to think I know now when I was like five years old. So uh, it just slowly accumulated over time and finally gave me that worldview that I have. And it and it's always subject to change and always subject to error. You know, I could be wrong about everything I say. Uh, so um, I'm hoping I'm not and I don't think I am. But, you know, I, I make mistakes. I'm not perfect. 
uh, but I keep I keep trying to move through life using my life experiences, everything that I've learned, um, my interpretation of the universe, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, last question. You wrote a book. Would you like to read us something from it? Uh, yes, I usually keep one, I think. You know, this is, uh, I don't know if that, if that title, yeah, wait. Yeah, that's the Forever All. In fact, I recently uh, had to change the title to Pantheism, the Forever All, because search engines just did not like that title because it was too... It was too simple. The key words, the forever all, it just isn't, it didn't uh, latch on to anything. Um, as soon as I changed it to pantheism, the forever all, then I, I it really started getting, you know, a lot of sales. Um, oh, and by the way, that's one of my, uh, uh, that graphic there I created, um, which I don't know if you can see it there, but it's me in the center of the universe. But then it, when you step back, it's, it's creating my eye. Let's see. Let me get my glasses because I'm getting old. This year, actually, I just started having to wear uh, reading glasses. Okay. Uh, to summarize the essence of all my views and the purpose of this book, I am under the impression that the universe is an infinite system which has always been here and always will be and that each of us can consider him or herself to be at the apex of, of that infinite and forever system. I believe this infinite and forever system, which I often call the forever all, is, re is required in order for any of us to exist. I strongly believe there is a profound meaning and purpose to it all, and an inherent goodness, which can never be destroyed. Unfortunately, I believe there is also an inherent darkness which too can never be destroyed. There can't be one without the other. But ultimately, these two forces remain conserved and balanced. I've come to realize that neither science nor religion, independent of the other, can provide a satisfactory explanation to our existence or the existence of the world. I believe ultimate truth will arise only when the scientific thinkers join forces with the spiritual thinkers. Yes, the world can be viewed as a mechanical thing, but at the same time, it is an awesome, divine thing, which ultimately goes beyond full understanding. That's this. Yeah, that's that's one of the uh, uh, one of the things I've written that I'm most proud of so far. I do a lot of creative writing too, but this was uh, um, a compilation of all my writings mm -hmm. as I was, go you know, over the years, even back when I was a teenager, uh, uh, different thoughts that I had had that I had written down, written essays. And so I put them all together in that book. So that way it could all be, you know, together. Okay, Gaius, thank you for the interview. And thank you for having me. Thank you.